All right, let's talk about router on a stick. What is router on a stick? Do I need to know how to configure router on a stick? Is router on a stick even relevant anymore? Let's start by explaining what exactly router on a stick is. For those familiar with layer three switches, you know that, well, those switches work at layers two through three of the OSI model. Routing happens at layer three, the network layer. So on a layer three switch, Inner VLAN routing is as simple as enabling routing using the IP routing command and then creating your VLANs along with the corresponding SVIs. Now, let's say that you have a managed layer 2 switch, which is capable of VLANs. However, it is incapable of routing between those VLANs. Or maybe you have a scenario where the router is providing firewall functionality and you need to force inner VLAN traffic through the firewall for inspection. Both of these scenarios is where router on a stick comes into play. The concept behind it all is simple. Essentially, you're trunking your VLANs, so tagging them with .1Q tags, up to separate logical subinterfaces on the router. Each subinterface on the router is a layer 3 interface, which has an IP address, as well as could be its own firewall security zone as well. The tag traffic hits the subinterface on the router, it then is re-tagged with the destination VLAN and sent back down the trunk. This is pretty much the same thing as a layer three switch, just with the layer two and layer three roles split up between two physical devices versus uh, being combined into one. So, do you need to know how to configure router on a stick? Well, I would say yes. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea, which leads to the last question. Is router on a stick even relevant anymore? The reason I would recommend learning this is because even if this isn't too prevalent in the real world anymore, it is most likely going to be an exam topic. But backing up for one second, though it may not be a common configuration in most networks, that doesn't mean that it's still not used either. Remember what I said about forcing firewall inspection between VLANs? That could be one reason why you might still see this around from time to time. Anyway, let's get into the configuration. I'll be using an older Cisco Catalyst 2950 along with an 1841 ISR router. We'll just be creating two VLANs today for the sake of simplicity, and with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so here is the Catalyst 2950 that we're going to be using, and here is the uh, 1841 that we're going to be using uh, as the router on the stick. So uh, we're going to plug this CAT6 cable into Fast Ethernet uh, 0 slash 24 on the 2950. Uh, this is going to be the trunk interface that we're going to send the uh, tag VLAN traffic through to the router. So the cable is going to be like our stick and the 1841 we will be using uh, Fast Ethernet uh, 0 slash 1. So I'm going to move over to the computer now and show you how to get this configured. Alright, so we're going to start with the layer 2 switch, the Catalyst 2950. And I just performed a uh, write erase on the switch. So everything is reset to factory defaults, except I changed the host name to uh, layer two switch. The first thing I'm going to do is configure the VLANs. And like I said earlier, we're just going to use two VLANs for the sake of simplicity here. And we'll go to uh, global configuration mode. And we'll just go uh, VLAN 10. And we'll do uh, VLAN 20. Looks like I have another VLAN on here from a previous thing. So even when you do a, a factory uh, reset on the switch, it actually won't clear the uh, VLANs from the switch. So even though I, I issued the write erase command uh, before uh, um, making this video, uh, I, there's still a VLAN 30 hanging around from a previous thing. And that's because the 
uh, the the VLAN database exists in the VLAN VLAN.dat file uh, versus the uh, startup config, which would be your uh, configuration on your switch or your router. Anyways, we're just going to be using the VLAN uh, 10 and 20 that we created. And so now that we have those uh, VLANs created, let's um, let's assign. Let's go interface fast ethernet zero slash one, and we're gonna make this an access port, oh, switch port mode access. Uh, this port is also going to be uh, used for uh, one of our hosts when we go to test this. So we'll do uh, switch port, uh, actually uh, spanning tree, port fast. and switch port access VLAN 10. So fast ethernet zero slash one will be on VLAN 10 and fast ethernet zero slash two will be on VLAN 20. And actually, I should do a, I think on uh, switches, the ports are uh, administratively up to begin with. But just to be sure, we'll do a no shutdown on both of them. Okay, so now we have uh, fast ethernet 0 slash 1 on VLAN 10, fast ethernet 0 slash 2 on VLAN 20. And let's go ahead and configure the trunk interface on fast ethernet uh, 0 slash 24. Uh, which is our link connected to the router, which will be connecting to those sub-interfaces that we're going to configure on the router. So we'll go fast Ethernet 0 slash 24. Switch port trunk encapsulation. Now, I, I think that this command is not actually uh, going to be available on the 2950 because the only uh, encapsulation um, mode available is 802.1q there's no isl so by default it's going to be dot one q encapsulation so when we issue the switch port mode trunk command dot one q is going to be the default encapsulation on some switches you may need to specify the encapsulation by issuing the switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q command so we have switch port mode trunk. I'm going to do switch port trunk allowed VLAN 10 and 20. So we're going to manually uh, prune the VLANs there. Do a no shutdown. So now fast ethernet 0 slash 24 has, uh, has become a trunk port. The allowed VLANs are 10 and 20, so uh, fast Ethernet 0 slash 24 will carry the traffic for both VLANs 10 and 20. So that will carry our traffic to the router, which will then route between those sub-interfaces, and we will have communication between those VLANs. Uh, really quick, before I go on to the configuration of the router, I just wanted to show you something really quick. Uh, just because this is a layer 2 switch doesn't mean that you cannot create an SVI or a switch virtual interface uh, for a, uh, a management VLAN uh, and then assign an IP address to that uh, SVI. So even though the switch doesn't do routing, you can still manage the switch uh, via Telnet or SSH and assign an IP address to that SVI. So let's just go ahead and create uh, interface VLAN 10. We'll say 10, uh, VLAN 10 is our management VLAN. And we can go uh, IP address, and we'll just say VLAN 10 will be on the 192.168.10.0 slash 24 subnet. So 192.168.10. Um, so I'm going to use 10.1 for the logical sub interface on the router so i'll just say uh this will be uh i don't know uh, 10.2 the slash 24 subnet mask so we can assign that ip address to that svi uh we can now manage the switch well we would have to configure um 
we'd have to configure the uh, VTY lines to accept Telnet or SSH uh, communication and then the, uh, um, the uh, password uh, for the uh, VTY lines and all of that. But uh, I'm just showing you that we can assign this IP address. And if, if you were to manage this from a different uh, network, you could also say, uh, you know, IP default gateway. And then you could uh, say that, oh, the default gateway is uh, 192.168.10.1. So um, when, this, when this example is completed, say that we want to manage this switch from VLAN uh, 20, which is going to be on a different subnet. Uh, VLAN 20 is going to be on the 192.168.20.0 slash 24 subnet. But uh, we could manage the switch now um, uh, via that uh, IP address on the SVI that we just created uh, with the IP address 192.168.10.2 uh, from VLAN 20. Uh, as long as we set the default gateway to what that sub interface for VLAN 10 will be on the router. So we go IP default gateway 192.168.10.1. And uh, that's it. So again, the switch doesn't do routing. You can still uh, you can still have a management interface. You can still manage the switch and still assign a default gateway, just like uh, you would with a uh, PC or something like that. So yes, let's move ahead and uh, let's get the router configured. I'm going to go over uh, to my lab and move the console cable uh, over to the router and get that set up. Okay, so this router may have a previous configuration. I did not clear the router before I started this. Really, it appears as though I cannot type today. Okay, I guess uh, it looks pretty clean. So, yeah, we should be perfect. Okay. Okay, so we're on the router. Like I said, uh, fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 is the interface that that uh, CAT6 cable is plugged into. So, we will go to fast Ethernet 0 slash 1, do a no shut. And since we're dealing with sub-interfaces, we are going to issue the interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1 dot. And this is how you would create a sub-interface. And I would recommend that you go with the VLAN number that you're using. So for VLAN 10, we'll go fast ethernet 0 slash 1 dot 10. Okay. And next issue the encapsulation dot one Q and then the VLAN number. So this will be for VLAN 10, encapsulation dot one Q 10. Now you can assign an IP address to the interface. So like I said, a VLAN 10 will be in the 192.168.10.0 slash 24 subnet. So the IP address will be 192.168.10.1 slash 24 mask. Okay, and we have our sub interface uh, configured for VLAN 10 with the encapsulation set to dot one Q. And we have this VLAN set as 10 right here. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for VLAN 20. So we'll go fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 dot 20. Encapsulation dot 1Q 20. IP address 192.168.20.1 slash 24 mask. to show IP interface brief. And we have both of these up and up. So we should be good to go. That's really all there is to configuring router on a stick. Like I said at the beginning in the intro, you just create your VLANs on your switch and uh, create uh, a, a trunk interface and manually uh, I recommend you manually prune the VLANs on that trunk interface 
And on the router, you create your sub interfaces, set the encapsulation type to .1Q, and specify the VLAN, set the IP address on the um, on the on those sub interfaces, and then on the hosts connected to those VLANs, the IP address for the sub interface on your router uh, that will be what the default gateway will be set to on the computers connected to those VLANs. So in a working environment, you would have a DHCP server. You would, you would probably configure the router as a DHCP server to hand out the IP addresses and the default gateway and DNS server information. Or you would have a, a separate server uh, acting uh, as DHCP. Either way, uh, we're just going to statically assign the IP addresses and the default gateway on the computers are going to use to test this. And we're just going to see if we can communicate with uh, a host uh, on VLAN um, 10. We're going to see if we can communicate with the host on uh, VLAN 20 and vice versa. So let me go ahead and grab two computers. And uh, we're going to plug one into fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. Remember, I uh, assigned that uh, interface to VLAN 10 and then fast Ethernet 0 slash 2 which is assigned to VLAN 20. Okay, so I have uh, this computer right here and this computer right here uh, plugged into uh, VLAN uh, 10 on the switch and this uh, Lenovo ThinkPad is plugged into VLAN uh, 20 on the switch. So I just uh, patched them in uh, in the patch panel right here. Uh, so this is the Lenovo, this is the Asus laptop and we have uh, the uh, Catalyst uh, 2950 right here. So we have these uh, patched in going to these two guys over here and I'm just going to set up the uh, IP address and the default gateway on both of these really quick and then we'll see if we have reachability. Okay, so I have assigned the IP addresses and uh, default gateways to both of these computers. I'll go ahead and open up a command prompt window here and show you that this computer is uh, 192.168.10.10. Uh, so this is on VLAN 10, uh, default ga gateway being 192.168.10.1. Uh, the other computer, the Lenovo on VLAN 20 is 192.168.20.10. So let's go ahead and see if we have reachability. And we do. So essentially what's happening is, is the traffic is being forwarded uh, through the switch. It's being uh, forwarded uh, via that trunk interface uh, being tagged as VLAN 10 going up to the router and the router is uh, is stripped that uh, layer 2 header, looks at the destination IP address, looks in its routing table and sees that uh, the 192.168.20.0 um, uh, network is directly connected so it sends out an ARP to uh, obtain the MAC address of uh, 192.168.20.10. And it re-encapsulates that. So it sticks on another uh, layer 2 header. And also sticks in the VLAN tag uh, for VLAN 20. Sends it out, the, uh, uh, out its fast Ethernet 0 slash 1.20 interface. Uh, back through that uh, trunk link back down to the switch and to the host here, that Lenovo ThinkPad we have uh, sitting on VLAN 20. So I hope you guys learned something by watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you can reach me by email at rob at rmtechcentral.com. You can leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, if you like this video, uh, give it a like. If you um, want to subscribe, uh, please subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.